guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. Today we're over on the YouTube account and we are looking at the Cursed Realm, guys. Now, overall, my score on here was 28%. If you remember a little bit earlier, 26, 28% was where I ranked. Now you can see I am at 12%, thanks to the guide over on Reddit, which I will share the link down below. But looking at the the heroes that I was utilizing in here, um, one of the big, big factors was, of course, murking the Awakened version of Brutus. The other one I'm going to show you, which I believe is in Team 5, guys, um, for the build that I have. So we're going to go through the formations like we always do. Looking in here, guys, <clears throat> Orthos and the original version of Taylene. This is going to allow when Orthos actually alts, the original version of Taylene is still going to move. We have an energy battery with the original Aziz. We also do have the energy battery with the 9 of 9 for Scrag. We have our mitigation and our attack bo boost with um, Silas, our healing factor. Very, very all around a very solid team. Looking at team two, guys, this has Halos. Now, a lot of players were asking in the live stream today about Halos. Should they build him out? Is there a priority? Yes, he has absolutely shown his ability within campaign formations. We see him also in a lot of Twisted Realm comps, um, Cursed Realm comps. He's used in a ton of AFK Arena. Also, he boosts, he has an energy regeneration, he has a shield, um, very, very strong. In addition, Hodgkin, guys, is a hero that has shown an incredible amount of promise with the boost that he brings within these formations. Damon, I feel like I do have to build up a little bit. Um, Izold, we actually just got to this plus 30 engraving, which is nice. Used again in the Twisted Realm, the Cursed Realm comps. Moriel, we did the same. We actually got her up to the plus 30 engraving as well making a big difference. So any of the damage dealers that you have within here are of course stat dependent, meaning that getting them to that plus 30 engraving not only gives them additional stats, but they also get a little bit more damage out of the abilities of getting that plus 30 engraving. Looking at our th third team, um, one thing that I'm really missing in here is Anasta's nine of nine furniture does a huge factor of mitigation within this team. We have Kren, we have Oden as the lockdown. Oden, I got to get to that plus 30 engraving. Um, he is at plus 57 right now, so just a little bit more and he will be there. Also need to get the twins of that plus 30 signature item. Even though it is not a requirement, it really does go hand in hand with the survivability in these kind of game modes. The enrage timers actually go super high, meaning that the twins will die out long before the fight is over. Looking at team four, now this was one of my biggest adjustments, guys. Um, we got Mishka built out. We got a little bit of furniture there on Soros, but we have plus 30 engraving on Leonardo da Vinci now. We also do have plus 60 engraving on Raku. Then we also have Kazard at the 309 as well with no engraving. Within team five, again, this one is huge. Big shout out again to Bimo, um, the Awakened version of Brutus. Now, I borrowed Taylene, as you've seen earlier. I have a copy of Brutus in here. I also do have a copy of Taylene. Now, while I don't have either of those two heroes built, um, I got the Awakened version. That way, I can swap for this game mode specifically. So, really looking to score higher damage in here. In addition, looking at the teams here, guys, I just got Joan of Arc, her 3 of 9 furniture, which provides a very big boost. I also did get the plus 30 engraving on Queen, which again will give her a big boost to these stats. Um, also the crit rating, the attack that she gets in there, but also the ability to crowd control the other team with the stats that we get in here. We're going to have Brutus and we're going to have Lucretia bringing everyone together as well as Scrath. Scrath right here is built, I believe, 306, 307. I'm trying to get him to the 309, ultimately allowing him to maximize the damage. We use him in the Twisted Realm and Dark Nomura. We also do use him in here to keep the enemies together. So Lucretia has an AOE. Brutus will pull together for the AOE. We have Scrath in here for the AOE. We also do have Queen in here, which again, her ability amplifies the damage with AOE, which is just a perfect synergy formation. Then of course with Joan, we do have built up a little bit. Three of nine furniture making a difference in here because it is going to give her the ability to cast this ultimate ability. Um, nine of nine is ideal, so the 209 on her will actually do incredibly well, even though I did take her a little bit higher for the damage mitigation, which again, 309 will do incredibly well. Plus 30 engraving is another one. Um, that does really, really good. This gives the attack and the defense rating, which is awesome. Um, I, I do like this, and I really feel this is a big, big difference when it comes to her ability. 
Then of course our final one guys, switched it up a little bit. Ultimately you want Rain to be giving it, giving her bonus to the highest um, combat rating, which of course is Grez, except Scarlet is much, much higher. So the formation changes a little bit here, putting Scarlet up front, then with Grez, um, Rain, Rosaline following her, then Estrilda in here. Now Estrilda is another hero guys, I gotta get to the plus 30 engraving due to this 10% bonus. Um, which makes a really big difference with the Inspire ability. Another 10% bonus here for the attack rating would be a game changer. So I'm going to run through here. I'm going to see exactly what teams are wor really working incredibly well. I'm going to switch over to the guide after this, um, see exactly what we're doing. So you'll notice in here, guys, when Orthos ults, Taylene continues to move, which is the reason why she does an incredible amount of damage. Also, the ground burning with Aziz is going to mitigate the attack rating for the enemies that are here, which kind of provides somewhat of a double purpose in here um, because not only the ground burning, Feeble Mind will actually pull all of these heroes together, which means everyone surrounded around Orthos does have that time stop ability, so they will get frozen within here. Um, also, Aziz can keep all of the targets together. And you can see, guys, with the time stop ability, the Enraged goes pretty slow here. Um, which is good we're almost at a billion damage but because of orthos and this ability you can see the battles go incredibly slow this is actually one of the slowest battles there are because taylene and orthos really do an incredible amount of damage um out of the lost sigils event right now i recommend getting the regular version of taylene this is why guys she still does an incredible amount of damage and healing in addition when you start building her up you start putting the engraving behind her regular damage dealers do apply she will her damage will go sky high within these modes meaning that she is going to be able to produce look at that guys we're almost to three billion damage in this formation of course the rage starts burning out a lot of our regular heroes but overall not too bad with the damage that we're dealing here 2.75 this one of course bringing everyone together um we have hodgkin in here for the crowd control Need to get a little bit on him, a little bit of engraving on there again to deal with the Enrage timer or, or the Enrage. And also as the Enrage gets higher, guys, the crowd control is less effective, which is the reason why we do add a little bit of the engraving on there. Now, again, putting all of these targets together, um, we have Izold that just continues to scale. As he takes more damage, he is going to be able to um, put out more damage. And you'll see this number just continues to go faster and faster and faster as the timer goes down, as long as Izold is alive. Also Damon, so as this scales, the Enraged Timer scales, um, when the enemy gets stronger, he doesn't have a cap, so they actually get stronger within there. Again, five seconds left, 1.3 billion damage, so not too bad within that formation. This one's the Lockdown Formation, which is interesting. So putting all of these heroes, as soon as Kren ults, he'll start throwing these enemies right to the bombs right here in the back. Now remember guys, when they do hit these bombs in the back row, it amplifies Kren's damage. In addition guys, Oden will continue to teleport if Tassie gets out of line, just like she is right there. He can actually teleport her and put her right back onto this massive amount of heroes. And look at the damage here that Kren puts out guys. Again, Anasta, we need that 9 of 9 furniture, which will deal with the mitigation factor, um, putting that brawler's protection up on our enemies, or excuse me, up on our allies, allowing them to live a lot longer. But Anasta really holds this together. We do have one, one of the two twins in there as well, but the crowd control aspect itself, just locking this entire team in the back. If Kren was higher, if Oden was higher with that engraving, um, also with the mitigation again there from Asta, on a stop, we would be putting out a lot more damage. Now this one again, this is the heavy, heavy crowd control team in here. Um, there we go, so they're locked down. Kazard unfortunately went down pretty early in this one, but you'll see that the ability to lock down the targets in here um, does work incredibly well because remember, Kazard's plus 30 signature item will stay up even if Kazard dies. Um, not a good attempt on this one because Raku is really your damage dealer within here. But again, guys, putting uh, 715 up, which is pretty good. Then this one, of course, once we get this stanchion to the back, boom, Joan of Arc casts her ultimate ability. And then the lockdown kind of begins, which 
Interesting enough, Lucretia was kind of on the other side. But you can see guys locking down this team. We got Brutus over here. We got Lucretia over here. And the damage just skyrockets, guys. Again, Queen over here doing her little spinning lockdown. Skarath keeping them in the lockdown. Brutus bringing everyone together. Awesome. I, I Again, I love the synergy in here, guys. Um, it is very cool to see, and I'm glad that I went up. Again, I was at 20, it was either 24 or 26, I think 26. Um, when I went through, got the formations, actually put BMO's um, Awakened version of Brutus in here, 2.2 right there, which is awesome. Then, of course, this one just relying on Scarlet to break the damage as fast as possible, guys. It, it's insane. Look at that. Compared to what other teams were putting up damage-wise, guys, almost 2 billion damage right off the bat. We're even going to break 2 billion on here. Maybe if Rosalind can do it, very, very close, guys. 13.6, so almost 13.7, bringing us to 12, which means the rewards, guys, we get cards, which is what we're looking for. Um, I think if you get in the top 10, you get some of your... Um, Awaken cards. So let's see, guys. We only got 15 hours. So 12 to 15 is assuming where we're going to be. But I spent 100 diamonds. We did this reset. It's going to be well worth it. I went from, again, 24 or 26 all the way to 12. So I will take it, guys. Two more attempts to be able to possibly score a little higher. But I literally cut my ranking in half here by getting the Awakened version of Brutus. Which is why I say, guys, Merc, the heroes you don't have. I Merc Brutus, I Merc Taylene. They are the two that I really look to maximize my damage in here until I do get that Awakened version of Brutus built, which is going to take me a little bit, but we will definitely get there, guys. Final one stays at 13.6. So overall, guys, where I was at, look down here. So 10, 9, 9, 7, 10, 8, 9. And then we got the Merc the Merc version of Brutus right there, 13, 6, 11, 13, 11, 11. So overall, guys, a good, good run right here getting to that 12%. So guys, that'll do it for today. Um, again, I'm, I'm going to link to the guide down below. I'm not going to share it with you and kind of run through it all. Um, it is now a working, changing thing. I believe they set up a Discord server for this, which is absolutely phenomenal so we can give the feedback, working out which formations are working best. So guys, let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.